I'm going to walk you through the steps in Photoshop of how to build this 11 step grayscale. In Photoshop, I want you to go to the file pull down menu and I want you to create new. So uh, command N or file pull down menu. In there, I want you to make a new file that says grayscale and that I want it to be 11 inches wide by 2 inches high, 72 pixels per inch, and grayscale, and create that. And you'll have this nice little um, file right here, this nice little surface to be working on. I want you to make sure your layers are open, your color is open, and your toolbar is open. They're all available in the window pull-down menu. Um, and let's zoom in just a little bit to make this just a little bigger for us. It's a little bit easier to work in. Okay, let's put this on the bottom, put that on the top. I want you to make a new layer first because you never work on the background in Photoshop ever. Make a new layer so you have a free floating image that you can move around as you need to. And move over to the toolbar, select the rectangular marquee tool. Photoshop allows you to see the tool if you just kind of hover over, it gives you a little bit of information. So if you're a little iffy about what's in there, just you know, read the stuff, you can go, you can click on it, it'll give you a demo. Um, if you can't find the tool and you think it should be in there, click in the bottom, a bunch of other tools are in there and make sure you choose Rectangular Marquee Tool. Um, in Rectangular Marquee Tool, I want you to look up at the top and I, you might see normal fixed ratio or fixed size. Choose fixed size, uh, insert one inch by one inch at the top in the width and the height. And then you have this nice little box that will be building our nice little uh, grayscaling. So the first thing I want you to do, second thing I want you to do, eighth thing I want you to do is go over to the color slider and put in 10% into the color slider. Go back to the paint bucket tool and fill your little box with 10% gray. Now you want to duplicate this layer by dragging it into that little box there. Go over to the move tool, nudge it over to the right. If you see little boxes around there, it might look like that. Just click off the show transform controls because we're not transforming the box, we're just moving it over. Then we're going to make sure you stay on layer one copy, change that to 20, fill it with 20. If you are a Photoshop expert or have any experience, or if you're just a logical human, you will see what we are doing here. Just keep doing that, keep moving that over until they're all complete. Once they are all complete, you can take a peek at your layers uh, box and you can see that there is a whole bunch of layers and we can merge them all together and have them sit as one file and one image together once there isn't any spaces between any of your boxes. Okay. So select the top layer, hold down your shift key, select the bottom layer, go to the layer pull down menu and at the very bottom, it's there's I, you won't be able to see it in this picture, but you can see merge merge layers, not merge visible and not flatten image, merge layers. In which case now what we have is a nice, ooh, we don't have that. We have a nice file. If we go over to the move tool, I was on the paint bucket tool, so be careful about that, that we can move this around nicely um, and put it where we want on the page. What I do also want you to do is to add uh, your name onto the face of this so you know it's yours uh, and click on the horizontal type tool. When you use the horizontal type tool, uh, make sure this left is selected up here. Um, so it'll be justified left. You, if you click and drag where you want your name, uh, you'll see ellipsum or uh, orum comes up just like uh, delete that and then put your name in. It, this will make its own layer by default. You can see here that there is a layer there. Uh, it'll make a separate layer for your name so you can kind of nudge it around a little. Um, you can always change uh, the, you know, the, the font up here, the boldness up here, the font size up there, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then you can go in and edit if you've made a mistake, like not put your, your name in there correctly. So once you're done, 
uh, you want to now save the file. So I want you to sh I want to show you how I want you to save all your digital files, even your photo uploads, which you saw in the previous video. But let's do this here in Photoshop, okay? Because this is now a PSD file, and we don't want this to be a PSD file. We want this to be a JPEG. So let me show you how to do that. Um, you might want to keep your PSD files. In the future, as we move through this class, you will want to keep PSD files. You'll want to keep those images so you can play around with them more. But like it, right now, we don't need this as a PSD file. It's a very simple file. So go to the File pull-down menu. Navigate over to Save As. In Save As, you see I had named it Grayscale already, right? And you can see it's a, P a PSD. We want to put this somewhere on our computer where we find it. So I have it on my desktop, which is a good thing. And in there, I'm going to call this Grayscale, and I'm going to put my name on it. But I don't want it to be a PSD. I want it to be a JPEG. So in the format here, I kind of choose the JPEG, and then the end of my, uh, my name my file name changed to JPEG, and then I can save that. And the reason why we do this is because when I click OK, I have not saved the file yet. Um, it's asking me if I want to do this, in which case I look here and I realize, oh, all my layers have been flattened. That's a good thing. That doesn't change your PSD file. It only changes your JPEG file. Okay, but you can save this, and it'll be saved as a JPEG, and then you can still go ahead and as it's saved on your desktop somewhere, um, you can still work this. You can do, still do other things, and that's a really awesome thing. And that's it. Once you save that, upload it to your page, and that's part one.